Dragon Ball Super Super Hero is a title that mildly irritates me. Why have Super in there twice when Dragon Ball Super Hero is right there? It's the s'more Oreo thing all over again. But that wasn't on Toei. It's Nabisco's cross to bear. You were this close. The movie though, surprisingly good, and probably the second best Dragon Ball movie. My initial impression from the first couple trailers wasn't exactly glowing, but that probably would have been the case for any Dragon Ball thing that didn't have the exact same style as Broly. But after watching it with an open mind and a bladder full of regret, I can confidently say that it's up there as far as DBZ movies go. Which doesn't say a lot since a lot of them are just absolute messes that happen to have cool villain designs, but still. Superhero doesn't quite get that number one spot, which is obviously the one with the return of fan favorite character Broly. In 1994's Dragon Ball Z Bio Broly, of course. While I still have dreams about the animation in Broly, I gotta say the 3D surprised me. Sometimes it's a little stiff and the backgrounds could seem weird compared to the models that move in them, but because of the new style it has it allows for some really cool movement in the fight scenes and occasionally it gets to a point where it's so close to what we've seen in the past, for some shots it almost makes me think that it's hand drawn. Or it actually is hand drawn. I know for sure Videl and the flashbacks are, but the point is some shots look really good. Not really good for CGI, just really good. So while I'm still itching for more Shintani Dragon Ball, if they want to take another swing at this style, I wouldn't hate it. And for the people who don't like it, I'll say this. Even if it's not your cup of tea, isn't it nice to think of something like this when the words 3D Dragon Ball come up instead of this? Ruthless, vicious, and on a mission to possess the power of the seven Dragon Balls. Meet Lord Piccolo. <laughs> Superhero is also the newest movie in the series to not focus on Goku as the main character, but the last one to try that out being, and I'm not joking this time, 1994's Bio Broly. The main duo we follow are the father and son team of Gohan and Piccolo. The basic plot is Piccolo finds out the Red Ribbon Army is back and Fate kidnaps a child so her dad can be cool again. I liked almost all of the new Red Ribbon Army people introduced, especially the androids whose designs grew on me. The only army associate I wasn't crazy about was the big one, if you know what I mean. And the angle they used to convince people to actually work for the Red Ribbon Army is pretty interesting. Of course there's some more stuff in there, more Z fighters join in towards the end, new transformations are unlocked, and there are a couple gratuitous shots of characters' lower extremities. I really enjoyed following Piccolo do his thing and focus on more people than the two Saiyans that are usually in the spotlight, though don't worry, those two definitely get more than enough screen time here. Emphasis on more. Too much, really. The movie takes some from Broly and Battle of Gods and how it's structured. In the beginning there's a lot of setup for the bad guy, then the rest of the film has a pretty light tone with fun character interactions and small fights sprinkled in until things get heavy and the big climactic showdown happens. I didn't mind the beginning, though it didn't hold my interest as much as Broly, and while the climax did have a lull in the middle of it for me, my biggest problem was all the stuff that took place not on Earth. The main plot is chugging along, we're having fun, learning stuff about ants, and snap back to reality, Goku and Vegeta are the money makers, and of course they get their 15 minutes. To know what's going on with them is cool, I know it doesn't make sense to just phase them out entirely, but it stops any plot progression in its tracks. You either have to split it up into pieces and spread it throughout the movie, or shorten it. I prefer the latter. The music, like the animation style, was also a departure from how it was in Broly, as in no more name shouting. A lot of it felt light and triumphant like it would play when you were swinging around in Spider-Man PS4, which might have been what the composer was aiming for. Not Spider-Man, just very classical superhero vibes to match with the theme some characters had. There was also one pretty neat techno piece that played during the rain scene I especially liked. So all in all, solid Dragon Ball movie. Probably the funniest one too. Though it does have an unfair advantage of having Piccolo do a lot, because having a demon slug man doing anything that isn't fighting is really funny. It doesn't quite have the same spectacle level as Broly, but it does have Pan learning how to fly, so that probably makes it a wash. Last thing, I knew he wouldn't be in it because he wasn't in any of the trailers, but can someone please figure out how to wake up Boo? Everybody loves him, and he would be very helpful in all these fights. I'm just saying, you see Boo taking one of his hibernation naps, just give him the ol' and he'll be good to go. Put him in the movie, everybody flocks to the theater, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes until he makes a trillion dollars. Everybody wins! So that's the video. Thank you for watching, and if you want to see anything in the future, be sure to subscribe here, and or follow me on Twitter for updates. Later.